In this video, we're going to go over some basic configurations for the Horus. So I've been using this for a couple of weeks and I'm just going to share with you what I've learned and uh, what really helps out to make sure that uh, you enjoy using your Horus. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lift up on here. I'm going to push the button, hold it for a little bit. Welcome to Horus. It's going to go ahead and boot up. And then we're just going to wait for it. And there we go. So when you first get your Horus, the first thing I'm going to tell you to do is to um, adjust some of the display configurations. So in order to do this, down here, there's the Systems button. So we're going to go ahead and select that. Once you go into the Systems button, if you look up at the menu, the display is the third one down. So you just use the knob and then hit the Display button. So what I would tell you to do is uh, when you first get the Horus, this is actually going to be completely blank. So it's going to say something like this. Uh, what I would say is go ahead and put it onto a switch. So I'm going to say I want it on a switch and I want it on S1. So if we zoom out, S1 is actually this knob right here. So we're talking about this knob right here. So when I select enter, and, or I can move over here and actually switch it to other knobs, but I want to keep it on S1. You can actually uh, select all sorts of different knobs, but uh, that's the one I've selected. And now what I can do is I can actually adjust the brightness of this display using this knob. And this is really useful to um, keep the battery life really good on your horse so that when you're out flying and you don't need a whole uh, very bright screen, you can dim it down. Or if you're out in bright sunlight and you absolutely need the maximum uh, brightness, you can turn it all the way up. So, very useful knob. The next thing we're going to talk about is the sleep option, which you definitely need to use if you're going to want to keep uh, your Horus uh, up and running for any length of time. So right now it's set to 60 seconds. So at 60 seconds of no key presses or uh, stick movements, um, it will actually go to sleep. Actually, in this current uh, form, it's only key presses. Uh, it'll actually uh, shut off the display. Generally speaking, I usually keep it at 30 seconds and then it will turn off. This last one will tell you when, uh, at what point it will wake up. It's either going to be with uh, key presses and stick movements, so any Anytime you move the joystick or hit one of these buttons, it will wake back up the screen. You can have just key presses or just stick movements. Uh, generally speaking, I like having just key presses and then it will go to sleep in 30 seconds. And what this will do is uh, the screen will be off the majority of times. And when you're actually flying and using the sticks, uh, the sticks actually will not uh, turn the screen back on. I find that if I do it on 30 seconds with just key presses, uh, I can keep the transmitter on one charge for well over a week. That's really going to give you uh, maximum battery life. There's a lot of people out there that tell you that it gets horrible battery life. Um, a lot of it is due to the screen being on all the time. So if you, you know, have the right settings for your uh, display to where you can balance when it's on and when it's off. I don't think you're going to have much problems with battery life. So we're going to go ahead and return to the main menu. And the next thing we're going to talk about is the, uh, the timers up here. So what we want to do is we want to go ahead and put uh, a time to each one. And that's fairly easy to do. So you just go ahead and push in and then you can go ahead and tell uh, the transmitter when you want to start the time. So uh, the first selection is saying that we want it to count down uh, and then we can give it an amount of time. So I said three minutes and then uh, what kind of sound it wants. You can either select a beep or you can actually select audible speech. I find the audible speech a little bit annoying so I keep it at beeps and then the last thing you can tell it to is what to track. So uh, I'm just going to track throttle. Uh, that's what I would like to track. Uh, you can do throttle percentage. You can also put it on a switch if you want. Uh, entirely up to you, but uh, throttle works for me. Over here on this side, it'll tell you which switch to put it on. For me, I have it on this switch up here. 
and this is the uh, momentary switch so that I can reset it and uh, uh, it's on a spring so that it will reset itself. I find that that's the easiest switch. This is also commonly used as the uh, trainer switch. And then uh, do you want it to log uh, the times, which I put it at no. So now if we go back to the normal screen and we move up on the throttle, you'll notice that the timing will uh, start moving. And once you have it all the way down again, the time will stop. And then if I come over here on the momentary switch, I can go ahead and reset the time. So one last thing before we wrap up the video, and this is something that I found that actually annoyed me and it wasn't something that I understood for the longest time, which uh, really frustrated me when it comes to configuring and binding on this transmitter. And that is the model uh, menu. So the model uh, button is right up here. So when you hit it, this is the model menu. If you use the scroll wheel, you'll notice you can scroll through all of the individual uh, settings. But when you get down here to the last one, it scrolls back up to the top, uh, to the top in the beginning of the uh, of the menu. But this is actually not all of the settings. If you come over here to this other dial, this uh, other uh, button system, you actually have to push page down to go to the next screen. So I actually didn't know about the uh, the next screen for the longest time, which I needed a few settings from this screen. Uh, in order to configure my multi-rotor so like it took me the longest time to figure out that I can page up and page down on the model menu I just assumed that if I kept scrolling like this I would reach screen number two but actually it doesn't it just starts you over you actually have to come over hit the button in order to move in between page one and page two of the screens something that I didn't realize and uh, hopefully that uh, saves you some frustration when you're working with this transmitter